and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the flag, not really where I want it to land it, because that's the way I do it. Yep. If Tiger was here, he would tell you, or Stricker, you know, I'm trying to land it right, and there's a little light green spot. I'm not that good. So I'm trying to hammer this down in there low and just get it skipping oh, up to the flag. Oh, that looks pretty good. That yeah. Pretty now that, good now I'm... Now, now, you, I'm, now I'm starting to look like a golfer. This is, this is called warming up, and see, yeah. and through this process, we've kind of warmed Maybe you up should a move bit. to the desert and forget Queen Anne, and I'd practice a lot more. <laughs> That's right. Tomorrow we're talking to Fred Couples. One of the most beloved, I would say, iconic figures in golf. And what we're doing with him is, well, one, watching his golf swing, two, talking through his process, and then I think hopefully just getting to know him in a little bit more of a dynamic, three-dimensional way. Um, that's the idea of warming up. We're literally gonna see how he warms up. We're gonna nerd out with him. But then also, it's like a vibe check. It's like, how does this guy think? How does he hang? How does he converse? Forget about the cameras. They'll just capture I'll just us. I'll focus so on I want to you. Start. We did. We did not get you any ice cream this time, but I went Jesus down to your. Christ. I went down to your old stomping How did you grounds. Ice cream. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Claire works with us. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Claire was phenomenal. I went to Jefferson Park, Am and I, I said, that? I said, no, no, you don't have to wear it. But the only hat they had left was Tiger Woods brand. Right. And I said, you know, that's about perfect for did Fred. Did you show so him I this? I brought yet? this for you. No. Well, I wear it. How good is that? That's phenomenal. Only hat they had left in the shop. Jefferson Park. Wow. I'm not looking at the, this is like the office where I, I know the camera's not there, but I stare at it. That um, is all, is that for me? That's for you. I'll be all you. Well, he will, you know what? Three to one odds says he won't even notice that. Three, but we'll, we'll just see. Just be focused on the okay. logo on the front. Um, so how are you, Fred? I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? You're well, so many different things now. You're a coach. We see you're you're a, you're a captain. We've seen you over in Italy, teaching guys things. You're a guru. You're still a player. You're shooting well, low guru. 60s now and then. I think so. Okay, I feel people like I'm a to guru for, to a handful of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and how do you see it? yourself? All of all of the above. All of those things. You're a competitive um, golfer. You you're know, a lot of first, I'd like to be competitive. Yep. So I'll go fast. I had hernia surgery in July. Yeah. And that went well, but I had to get off my anti-inflammatories to take the surgery. And then yeah. the doctor asked if I could get off them, which caused a back problem. So I have not played, I played the Pure yep. with Sam Reeves, our guy. And then I flew to Italy. I did that and then I haven't played any until Monday. And then I came to the Bridgestone shoot to see you. And All right, hit a couple pitches okay. if you would be so, so kind. All right. At this point, do you, like, can you just pick it up? I mean, I know you got to warm your body up if you're really going to no, play. No, on, on this, this is probably what I should do more. Yeah. As we all know, I have some back issues, but I know I don't want to keep rubbing that no, in. No, 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 no. But it's the it's the real. If I stood here, I try to line up balls so like I walk to them, and yeah. then hit another shot. If yeah, I just yeah. dug a hole here, my back would get really sore. Is that right? You got to stand up. Yeah, but so. The, the biggest thing in chipping is yeah. some people will say, I need to fly it to a certain spot. Mm -hmm. I'm not kind of that guy. Yeah. I am focusing on the flag. And here we are in Florida. I could tell I'm a little into the grain. Mm -hmm. So it should stop a little quicker if, you're, if it's shinier and down grain and you've got to fly it a certain spot. But again, I've done it for 40 years, so I kind of know. So All right, so I, you're looking at this red flag. Right. Yeah, how are you thinking about it? Well, right now I'm thinking of, of it's a little grainy into the ball. Yeah. I would rather be going that way. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm thinking of contact and how I'm going to get down and through the ball. Boy, that's pretty good. Yeah, and so Ooh. that was hammered a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And that's not great. You'll make that great. Yeah, but see how you're taking a little divot? Yep. So if we were to go. Yeah, stand up straight here. Yeah, well, most of the grass is cut into us, but 
I was just with Tiger, and he made it look easy over there. And he goes, no, dude, it's just the contact. So I'm using so what that it, term. Yeah, so, so, the, so you, you've got a grainy lie here. Are you trying to hit ball first, or you're just trying to make that perfect, crisp contact? I'm, tr I'm trying to hit the ball first. Okay. And because of the grass is growing against you, you've got to go down and through it. So I'm going to take a little bit of a divot yeah. every time. If the grass was laying, Ooh, like that was good. Yeah. It's, gonna it's stop still going past, right but well, if the grass was laying with me, I wouldn't take any divot at all because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm shallowing through and I'm actually using the turf to go with me. But again, this is not a hard shot. If the grass was really, really cut yeah. and it was firm, so you know, that's from not practicing. And so that, that grabbed. well, that was more kind of skinned mm -hmm. and I need to get issue. correct. Okay. So that was picked up, meaning like this. I need to get the club away from my body and follow through. And then the rest is the contact. Yeah. So again, let's say this is a par five. Mm -hmm. And I hit my second shot and it trickles here. I should be getting this up and down for me seven out of 10 times. Tiger would say probably eight or nine. Yeah. But you'd have to make a five, six, eight footer. This is not a difficult shot. And here's the funny thing. Because of my technique, yeah. I have a stronger grip. The harder the shots, I mean, how would I work? I made look easier. So if I chipped here and people were watching, they'd probably go and say, wow, that's not that good. <laughs> But you give me this shot here. Put you in a corner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, we're 20 yards ago where it takes Sure, look at this of, white one here. You're yeah. a little short-sighted. Right, and it's crazy. And, and you know, today I would bounce it in there, but I just open it up a little bit, and I try and get the club to go left of the flag. <laughs> yeah, so that's stone dead. Isn't that crazy? That <laughs> could go in. Now these right. are cake. Yeah. And I've got a 12-footer, a 10-footer, <laughs> an 8-footer, a 20-footer. Yeah. That one you can pick up over there. Yes, and a lot of it, you know, I'm, I'm not a bashful guy. A lot of it is tension. Like, you're watching a group, you're following people. Yeah. You would say, wow, he didn't get it up on, on up and down on nine for birdie. That killed him. If, if a guy didn't get this up and down, you go, oh, he left himself in a bad spot. Yeah. So the tension's there because The expectations I, are there. Yes, yes. On this... You know, you're going to get this up and down four out of ten times, yeah. maybe three. But my visually, I just think it's an easier shot. Isn't that funny? That had some good grab on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Fred, how is it that you've sort of transcended generations the way you have? Tiger seems to be a good buddy of yours. JT seems to be a good buddy of yours. You said Xander and Cantlay. Those are yeah. two guys you've spent time around. Yeah. How? What is it about uh, you that is that's ageless? Well, I th I think I think one of the things that I really really like and people can kind of see is that I guess the easiest answer would be is I don't like everybody and I'm not helping a lot of people. I mean, JT I talk to and I tell him when he's playing great how easy it looks and all that. Tiger, we just have fun. We usually talk about his kids or what school they're gonna to go to or how he's doing, but it's very rarely a question of something I shouldn't ask him. It's, it's just simple. And then we get going and we start laughing so hard at each other. But I, I, I think with Cantlay, it's more when we played at home a little bit in Orange County, he's a shot maker. And so we would play and he'd ask me some things and I would tell him, you know, well, you already do this. You know, you, you, you work the ball towards the flag you don't hit it straight up. So we hit it off mainly because he he loves to play golf when he was at home and I like playing with him. And then X and he are buddies. Yeah. But you know, for guys on tour, um, I mean, Davis Love has been a friend forever. He's a little younger, but I, I, I have no problem. I'm not a guy who's worried about, you know, how much money this guy makes from a contract or how good they are. I really like to see them all play well. And, and sometimes it shows and then, yeah. you know, they hit on that. Like Wyndham Clark at the Ryder Cup. I just, I stared at him a lot. You know, I don't, n never met him. Yeah. Saw, I went to the US Open for a couple of days. I only saw him hit off the first tee on Friday, I think. 
and I just really, really liked him. I mean, I like them all, but I could see his mentality and his brain just going. And then he played with Cantlay when they won the match against Ricky mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, Ricky, with Rory and Fitzpatrick. So I saw him 18 holes and I saw him grind. I could tell things were going through his brain like, you know, slow down, mm -hmm. but I didn't know him well enough. So most of the stuff I was doing was patting him on the butt or walking with Cantlay. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing to him. Sure. They never even played a practice round together. So the duration of his all and a little bit was learning from really Lee Trevino, Floyd and Watson. And they all gave me time. Floyd probably the most. Trevino, um, if he was, he was with Bridgestone for a while. If he was here today, yeah. every free minute I would be sitting with him. All right. He just is a trip to me. And he's always yeah. wanting to know how I'm doing and what kind of shots and, you know, doing this and that. But Floyd was more who taught me, I guess, how to save a shot around. Hmm. And it wasn't like, let's go chip and putt all day. It was mentally, you know, he noticed I played par fives and I would try and go to back left pin or go to the right and I'd short side myself and make a par and we were at the shark shootout in Thousand Oaks at Westlake and we won but I butchered a couple times and so he looked at me and says how many eagles you make this year because it was in seasons over yeah I said I don't know not many maybe 12 and he goes yeah 12 you play 25 tournaments you're making 12 eagles you're trying to eagle every par five make a four and it just stuck so now when I hit a two iron from 230 and I don't cut it to the flag and I hit it 40 feet, I'm happy with it. Because sometimes, you know, a shot that looks pretty good and all of a sudden it trickles over and you're in rough and you have no green and you make par, you're livid. Yeah. So just little things. But I'm not a teacher. I, I, I couldn't teach Cantlay or when I couldn't teach him anything. But I can get them pumped up. Yeah. Oh, I can get them pumped up. Well, yeah, and there must be some, you know, no one has ever said, oh, Tiger, he's such a chill guy. Or Cantlay, he's such a, do you yeah. think that there's a part of your personality <laughs> that they draw from, that they draw a certain energy that maybe, I think you know, so. they don't have I know Cantlay's own? very relaxed. Yeah. Um, we do, I mean, last winter with, with uh, Ricky Fowler, we played like five rounds and I wasn't feeling that good, but they were there for several days. And we have lunch. And, and it's a very laid back. Patrick is kind of laid back, but he's not. Tiger, I think. That makes a lot of sense. I think he's yeah. laid back now. And I think he, see, I don't ever ask him for anything, but when he was dead in his prime, 30, 35, winning all those events, we still knew each other, but we really yeah. started like at night. Hey, I call him kid. Hey kid, what are you doing? And he'd fly right back. And then because, you know, he doesn't sleep, that much i'm on the west coast he yeah. can text me till 10 at night so we just go back and forth i've noticed that about living on the west coast it's like yeah. i talk to my friends that are like <laughs> night owls right more. exactly yeah. or you wake up because they're texting you at four in the morning when it's seven there and he loves to do that but yeah i i, I think it's who you want to latch on to and for me i went to watson's house one time spent a week with him but floyd i was always around i loved his wife uh, Maria was so nice to me. I stayed at their house a couple times throughout like the Honda or Doral. And then of course, Trevino is someone who just always comes up um, and, and is very helpful. He's amazing. Coming up to first fairway with Patrick. So I'm, yeah. I'm in Patrick and X-Man's pod and Patrick always likes me really right next to him. So we're walking up the fairway and he looks at me and he says, wow, our match is pretty important, isn't it? And I said, well, all the matches are important. He goes, well, Fred, as he calls me Fred, we're three down in the first match, we're two down in the second <laughs> match and we're one down, we haven't <laughs> tied a hole yet. So I would say our match is pretty important. Well, three hours later, they got dusted too, but yeah. it just was shocking. It was shocking. You were, I mean, you were there. I was also yeah. at Whistling Straits yeah. when I was watching Cantlay and X beat Rory and Poulter six and five, right. and we won every match, and that wasn't shocking. But this was like, wow, how are we going to win a point? Yeah. Or who's going to win a match? But they, you know, they played hard, and then obviously the, you know, the Joe LaCava thing got blown out of proportion, or at least I think it did. But 
Do you think it's gotten harder to play in front of away crowds, or it was always that way? I honestly don't. Really? I mean, uh, I don't really have a huge problem with that. And the first tee is always exciting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you you know, it was pretty brutal. They were booing us, and yeah. luckily we had a lot of Americans go because of Italy. Right. But if there were not many Americans in that first tee, Tough. you would have. It's hard to get booed. It's really hard to get booed, yeah. especially when you haven't hit a shot yet. You're not used to it. It doesn't no. happen a lot in no. golf. No. If, if, if you and I were playing at Augusta yeah. and we were tied and you were from Ireland and I was from the States and we went to the first tee and there were 50,000 people, it wouldn't change your life or mine at all. You go to the yeah. Ryder Cup and you're looking at a few Americans there and you got 49,900 yelling at you, it, it, it becomes a harder thing. flag all the way back there. Okay. So this is this is the third. So you get this one over here, which is just a little bit of a release. This one is cutting releasing. Okay. And I hit two good ones. And this is just more almost like the first two I hit. It's a little more hit through the ball. And I'm trying to I'm I'm, I'm looking at the flag not really where I want it to land it because that's the way I do it. Yep. If Tiger was here he would tell you or Stricker you know, I'm trying to land it right, and there's a little light green spot. I'm not that good. So I'm trying to hammer this down in there low and just get it skipping oh, up to the flag. Oh, that looks pretty good. That yeah. Looks pretty now that, good now, I'm, now, now, you, I'm, now I'm starting to look like a golfer. This is, this is called warming up, and see, yeah. through this process, we've kind of warmed up a little bit. Maybe you should move bit. to the desert and forget Queen Anne, and I'd practice a lot more. <laughs> That's right. But again, this is... a matter is, of talking you is, into it. Um, this is not... Difficult, but what I would what I would not want to do is on my next one, try and do something, you know, and hit it like that. Ooh, even I though like that's that, a good though. shot. Yeah. But but the idea is, you like to groove something. I like to visually hit the ball in the same height. Okay. So now if you throw a bunker up there, yeah. You know, then I got to go a little higher. This this shot here is all kind of feel and cut, but it but here I got all the green in the world, so. I'm always going to try and just get it bouncing in there. And that was a little too much right hand, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's still the right Getting weight. high though. Yeah. Five, four feet. How, how similar, when you think about the guy that was sneaking on to Jefferson Park or picking <laughs> the range there, how much, how similar is that guy as a golfer to who you are right now? I, I think I'm, you know, I was called a flippy wristed college kid. I was called flippy wristed when I was 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. I didn't have the John Daly, but I had the, you know, the just pick it up and go. And, you know, you're now, I mean, the ground's so soft, I could take the biggest divots. And so it was just a knack of going through the ball where if I had a sandwich in Seattle, I could just come, you know, and I had that long, loose swing. Yep. Be, it was really because of the turf. You know, so if you're in Florida, which a lot of people live, the ground's firmer, the yep. grass is different, and you're not gonna take as big a divots, although some, some people can. But in Seattle, it's just the way I would go through the ball. I wouldn't stop because of the big divot and then go, but it's the way I would go through the ball. And so when I, when I teach people chipping, that I, I, I can tell them what they're doing, I wouldn't really teach them you know, my way, because I'm just trying to, throw the club through here most mm -hmm. people wouldn't follow through to here right like they're going to follow through to there all my feel is really from about here to here yeah and and i'm just using this club and it's throwing it i'm not a guy at any part of my career where i could just spin the hell out of it really i mean i could i could if i had to cut it like up there yep. and spin it a little bit but my goal was to get it your where smooth I, customer yeah and, and a lot of times chipping, I would chip, you know, one hand. Really? Yeah. And I actually <laughs> chipped at the Houston Open. I lost by a oh, shot. Yeah. And I chipped one hand one of handed, the whole week. The whole well, week. I used to work with, I now work with Paul Marchand, but back then I was working with Dick Harmon, who has passed away, Butch's brother. And he says, you're not going to chip one handed. There's no way. I, I, I missed the 10th green. Yeah. Little dog leg left. I had an easy chip. And I chipped it one handed and I chipped it the whole week one handed. Um, all right, let's hit, let's hit one more to this uh, 
Let's see one more of this white one. Let's see if you can repeat this yeah. magic. So that's a pretty, let's just, let's see how good I am if I, this is where my ball trickled. Mm -hmm. So I would come up here and I would address the lie. Yeah. You see, yeah, that's the first thing you kind of observe it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, you can tell right here with the kid, this is light color. That's yep. what, that's where I want it. That way it's going that way. When you go here, it's going it's that, right at it's you. It's going right at yeah. you. So that's why this shot isn't ridiculously hard. I, if I hit 30 of them, I would probably fat a couple and they would get halfway up the hill. But the idea for me is just visually is to look to the left, but then swing the club over there. Yeah, and nice. I would probably take that six out of 10 times with the lie. Now, yeah. if the lie got better like this, now I would, then you want to really I would want it a little closer. But you are a guy that's kind of, I mean, Tiger talks about, you know, hooking chips or slight, you, He's you, unbelievable. you think about that in a similar way. It seems like you're spinning it. Yeah. He, he, right would, or he, left he can go both ways. Yeah. So I have this strong grip. So it, 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 it helps me and hurts me because I'm coming in this way. The weaker the grip, Tiger can get it going that way to draw a chip shot. Yeah. It's a lot of work for me. So with a stronger grip, it's easier to hold, yeah, yeah. hold, to hold the club. Like that. Right. And that's why you can hit that nice yes. cutty, spinny thing. Correct. So but let's let's say I'm going to go to the blue one and I, I'm going to hit a shot that I don't want to roll in there. This becomes really easy too. And yeah. the further I go back, I always want it falling to the right. Mm. Now that's a little Boy, that's jumpy. That's a full swing right there. And that might yeah. come in. So, yeah. and see, and that, some guys will look at that and they'll go, no, no, no. And so, look, I have a great, I've had a teacher since Paul, my college teammate. Yeah. So he would want me looking like this, honestly, on this shot. He would want me to take it here. Really? Yeah. Short to short. Yeah. And that's how the ball, but. Oh, that works too. Oh, thought you made but it. But if you've never done that, it's easy to do it now. And I would go see him in Houston and do this. Yeah. And I'd go to Augusta and I go just like this. I, it's, it's like. <laughs> Is that cycle. what happens to you at Augusta in general? I was just looking at it. You're one for one in made cuts on the PGA Tour this season. <laughs> right, I'm batting a thousand. Um, and it seems like you go there and you find the magic no matter what else is happening, no matter what your health is, no matter how long it's been since you've played. There's just something in the grass there for you? Yeah, I mean, I, it was so nice to make the cut and the weather was horrible. I mean, yeah. I really struggled, but I putted great. But, you know, I, I that was a big help. I think I missed the cut maybe four years in a row. I haven't really looked, maybe five of the last eight, but I had made some cuts in my 50s, late 50s, but yeah. it's my favorite spot. So, it, you know, I played nine holes with Tiger and JT, yep. and then I played with Rory, and it's an unbelievable week. Um, and I didn't know if I didn't really have those guys as friends, you know, like I play with, see, Patrick takes it, like, you don't want to play with me. And I say, Patrick, you already know this. I play, if, if you lose X, you can come in. Well, he wants to play with X. So I get it, but I will probably play with them this year. Yeah. Nine holes, because that's all they want to play. And for me, honestly, if I was feeling really well, I just like to walk. So I, I actually like to walk 18 holes. I mean, yeah. what, what, what am I going to do, bang balls for two hours on the range? And, I don't think so. You know, that's what they want to do. So the chipping part, Paul always comes, and we go to that green that's to the left of the range and spend time on it. And then when I get on the course, I always go back to this flippy. It's not good. Don't get me wrong. I used to be much better. <laughs> but you know how iconic your tempo is, right? Yeah. This, this is like such a thing that yeah. but i'm telling you right now if so i don't have this on video but chipping one-handed yeah. well erase Let's try that. that again the first one i did well but you did that's Ex no good either expectations again but here. but see even that he wants me to stop here and even one-handed i i go up there like that hands on there and so he's he's given into that but that's what he wants, a yeah. shorter backswing. I mean, and I, that's when Tom Watson, Ray really Floyd nice. was a little longer, but Tom Watson was really short. And I mean, he, he just went from here to there. And he would, he would sit here, he's probably already chipped in two, and you know, he would 
do that too. Like that's not anything unreal, but for me, it's visually an easier shot. Where amateurs, I mean, they get a little freaked out. Yeah. What's the thing you love most about golf now? Um, I, I, I really love competition. Yeah. Uh, like this year was a bummer. I mean, I, you know, some of the finishes were, you know, felt good about a 15th place finish on the Champions Tour. But I love the, the pairings, you know, going there and I'll get Ernie Els and I'll get Stricker or I'll get Davis Love and Furyk. I can't beat that. But the competition, you know, the, sometimes it's the competition, but it's then hitting a shot. So let's say there's a PGA Champions Tour at Augusta. We'll end with this. Yep. Right? And there's a lot of hard shots there. Yeah. But you have number 12 at Augusta, which if there's a little wind and I'm hitting an eight iron, it's hard. Uh, the fourth hole's hard. Tee shot on 10 for me is hard. 20 years ago, I could probably hit 75% of the hard shots good. Like if you were to go around, you'd say at Doral, you know, you got to do this. I, I would handle those. Now it's 50%. And the old days, if I got it up and down a lot, the one bad shot I hit, as long as it didn't go out of bounds or in a hazard, I could make par. And those are costing me. So instead of shooting on the Champions Tour, you know, like 69, it's a 70. Instead of really going well and shooting 66, it's a 68. And I gotta, I, I have to play more. It's all I gotta do, and, and I keep telling myself. And then, you know, last year I was all ready to roll. I practiced pretty well in December and January, and I, and I had a hernia, and I played with this thing until I finally couldn't do it anymore. So next year, it'll be hopefully some practice. Nice and you know play and get in a little rhythm that's a pretty good walk off there yeah thanks okay. Freddie. all right thank I you i appreciate it this is consider this your first practice session of uh the new year it that's actually more chipping than i've done in, in the whole year well maybe not at augusta oh, okay man. don't let me forget this awesome Todd? yes